I'm not ashamed. What did the crowd proclaim about Jesus while Jesus approached Jerusalem on a colt? This is the question that we seek to answer today as we continue our verse by verse study of the book of Luke on walking through the Bible. The glory of his cross. If you have a Bible with you, you can turn to Luke 19. We're going to be reading from verses 28 to 40. If you don't have a Bible, don't worry. Just follow along with us on the screen. The version that we'll be reading from is the New King James Version. So Luke chapter 19, beginning verse 28. When he had said this, he went on ahead, going up to Jerusalem. And it came to pass, when he drew near Bethphage and Bethany, at the mountain called Olivet, that he sent two of his disciples, saying, Go into the village opposite you, where as you enter you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Loose it and bring it here. And if anyone asks you, why are you loosing it? Thus you shall say to him, because the Lord has need of it. So those who were sent went their way and found it, just as he said to them. But as they were loosing the colt, the owners of it said to them, why are you loosing the colt? And they said, the Lord has need of it. Then they brought him to Jesus and they threw their clothes on the colt and they sat Jesus on him. And as he went, many spread their clothes on the road. Then, as he was now drawing near the descent of the Mount of Olives, the whole multitude of the disciples began to rejoice and praise God with a loud voice for all the mighty works they had seen, saying, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. Peace in heaven and glory in the highest. And some of the Pharisees called to him from the crowd, Teacher, rebuke your disciples. But he answered and said to them, I tell you that if these should keep silent, the stones would immediately cry out. Luke tells us that when he had said this, referring to the parable of the Minas that we have studied in our last two episodes, that he went again going up to Jerusalem. The way Luke covers time in this chapter make it seem like all that what has happened before and what will happen later on in the chapter occurs on the same day. But even from the chapter itself, we know that this is not true. Recall earlier on that Jesus was to stay at Zacchaeus' house on the journey to Jerusalem. Zacchaeus worked in Jericho, so it is unreasonable to think that he lived near Jerusalem and traveled to Jericho every day. From our standpoint, we think nothing of traveling 14 miles or 22 kilometers to work each day. But we have cars. They didn't. So you lived near where you worked. Moreover, when we get to our study of John, we'll find that Jesus stayed with Mary and Martha in Bethany, on the Sabbath day before his entry into Jerusalem the next day. So Luke's phraseology used in this chapter is meant to guide sequence of events, much like we would say, this happened, and after that, this happened, and after that, this happened, and so on and so on. We don't necessarily mean that they all happened on the same day, but give the order in which they happened. So as he drew near Bethphage and Bethany, we know from other accounts that the day has changed, and it is now Sunday. Bethphage is a village at the Mount of Olives, with the Mount of Olives being one of the mountains that overlooks Jerusalem. It is here that Jesus tells two of his disciples to go into the neighboring village, and they would find a colt tied on which nobody had sat. Matthew also mentions that there was a donkey as well, and they were to bring it, a fact that Luke omits. The disciples were to loose the colt and then bring it to him. How did Jesus know this? Jesus is God. He knows where you and I are at at every point in our lives, so it is nothing to know where the colt was. Was Jesus asking his disciples to steal the animal? No, for Jesus said the disciples, if they were asked, were to tell the person that the Lord has need of it, and the owners would agree to send the animal. This is what the disciples did. Although Luke doesn't directly tell us this, what was being done here was done to fulfill prophecy, specifically Zechariah 9, verse 9, which says, Rejoice greatly, O daughter of Zion. Shout, O daughter of Jerusalem. Behold, your king is coming to you. He is just and having salvation, lowly and riding on a donkey, a colt, the foal of a donkey. When the disciples brought the colt to Jesus, they placed their clothes on the, on the colt and set Jesus on him. But not only did they spread their clothes on the colt, they also spread them on the road, so that instead of the colt walking on the sandy road, it walked upon the clothes. This would be like us giving someone the red carpet treatment. Remember, the time of the year that Jesus did this was Passover. Thousands of people were coming to Jerusalem, and Jesus had been followed from Jericho by a multitude. 
so that there was a crowd with Jesus while he rode on the colt and descended the Mount of Olives, that should not really surprise us. That there were Pharisees among this crowd, too, also should not surprise us, for they were just likely coming to Jerusalem for the feast and happened to be in the crowd. As Jesus descended the Mount of Olives and came closer to Jerusalem, the multitude began to rejoice and praise God for all the mighty works they had seen, like the healing of a blind man near Jericho. They yelled out, Blessed is the King who comes in the name of the Lord. This quotation is from Psalms 118.26 and is contained in a psalm that directly applies to the Messiah. What they were proclaiming is that Jesus is the Messiah who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the King who will rule on David's throne in his kingdom. That's quite the statement. And so it's no wonder that the Pharisees objected and asked Jesus to rebuke his disciples. Jesus would do no such thing, for he said to them, If I tell them to keep silent, then the stones would cry out and say it. Of course, stones cannot speak, but they could miraculously be made to speak by God if God so chose. Jesus' point is this. Him being identified as the coming king was correct, and people, including the Pharisees, needed to hear it. We'll continue with Jesus' approach, approach to Jerusalem, the Lord willing, in the next lessons. With that, our time is up for today. The Lord willing, we hope you'll join us for tomorrow's discussion of Luke chapter 19, verses 41 to 48, as we continue our walk through the Bible, one verse at a time. I'm not a Thank you for watching today's episode. We hope that you found it edifying and ask that you not only subscribe to our channel and podcast, but that you like and share this episode among your friends so that the saving gospel of Jesus Christ can go out to the whole world.